When it comes to conversation scenes these days, a lot of directors like to do a standard coverage. Long shot, mid shots, over the shoulders, close ups. There is nothing specifically wrong with this kind of treatment. But if the same pattern is used throughout the film, there is a danger of things becoming mechanical. As more and more cuts starts to be motivated more by pattern than emotion, the film becomes mundane. On the contrary, in Paul Thomas Anderson's masterpiece There Will Be Blood, each cut feels organic. Images cut at a place where it feels natural, making the editing invisible. Anderson achieves this by using staging and blocking to create naturally flowing visuals. And this particular scene is the perfect example of that. The scene opens with a profile mid shot of a young man named Paul looking for Daniel. Considering how important this character is going to be in the narrative, a great length of time is invested in showing Daniel trying to study this person. So instead of cutting to Daniel, the camera lingers on him as Paul enters the room asking Daniel his vocation. What do you pay for a place that has it? Well, it depends. What does it depend on? The camera then slowly tracks in on Daniel when he answers Paul's questions. This extra bit of time helps us in understanding that Daniel is sizing up his visitor. When Paul asks for the permission to sit, we see the third character named Fletcher sitting in the room. The camera continues its tracking motion as the over the shoulder shot becomes a master. From this point on, consider this scene as a boxing match where each player tries to attack the other with a harder punch. The characters are staged in such a way that our attention will be directed by Fletcher who is staged closer to the center of the frame. When Paul asks Daniel, What church do you belong to? We get the first aggressive movement of the scene. Daniel leans forward, looking Paul straight in the eye. There's a slight pause before the answer. Not because he doesn't know what to answer, but because he wants to know the need for such a question. And when Paul gives him nothing, Daniel comes up with a diplomatic answer. I enjoy all faiths. I don't belong to one church in particular. I like them all. I like everything. Where are you from? Daniel then asks Paul a couple of direct questions, which he refused to answer and instead comes straight to the business. When it seems like Daniel is not taking the boy seriously, Paul lands his hardest punch. Why Just because there's something on the ground doesn't mean there's anything beneath it. Why did Standard Oil buy up land? Notice Fletcher's reaction. This little movement of eyes begs both Daniel and the audience to invest extra attention. But Daniel toys with Paul and again refuses to take him seriously. Is it in California? Maybe. How much land they buy? As Daniel feels like he has the upper hand, he leans back in his chair and the camera slowly starts to frame Paul in a profile single which excludes Daniel completely from the frame. This profile shot renders Paul little weak. As the negotiation starts, we get to see Paul's young naive face in a close-up. The moment we think Paul has lost the momentum, he makes a comeback by raising his price. $600. And this is the moment where Anderson makes his first cut. Because Daniel now realizes that the boy means business. Just tell me one thing to help me decide what else have you got up there? Would you grow? He now starts to ask some relevant question that will help him make a decision. The reverse shot on Paul is also the first moment where we see the fourth person in the room. Daniel's son, HW. The camera looks up on both the main characters as they both try to dominate each other. Then Fletcher enters the conversation for the first time, assisting Daniel in the questionnaire. Then Paul asks Daniel if the boy in the back is his son. The doubts in his mind regarding Paul are evident. To take the beat forward, Fletcher then asks Paul his name. Paul refuses to answer by asking him another question. It's like dodging a punch while you land another blow on your opponent. When Daniel offers Paul $500, it feels like he has accepted the defeat. But notice the framing. The $100 bills covering most of Daniel's face except for his fiercely concentrated eyes acts like a bait to lure the prey, which is reinforced in the very next shot which ends the scene with Paul again framed in a weaker profile close-up. I come from a town called Little Boston in Isabella County. This small scene lasting 3 minutes and 37 seconds sets up the rest of the film. From the start till the end of the scene, we see Paul at first introduced as a seemingly naive boy who goes on to become someone who needs to be taken seriously and ends up as the same naive boy again. Anderson uses blocking, staging, acting performances and the editing, four of the basic building blocks of a movie in the most effective manner to build an intriguing narrative. Every single cut counts, every single camera movement counts. There's not a single moment in this film where Anderson is not in control of his craft. So the next time you watch this film, notice how Anderson holds his shot to portray suspicion, carries out a scene through staging of actors alone, and cuts only when motivated. 
So when you sit to plan your next film, don't just go for standard short lists. Be creative in your staging and blocking. Who knows? You might just end up creating the next masterpiece.